Keeping It Young podcast is sponsored in part by TWR360.org, giving the world powerful Christian content in more than 100 languages. Visit TWR360.org, the global internet platform of Trans World Radio. If you could find an inexpensive user-friendly tool to help you and your church family in scheduling volunteers, think nursery workers, cleanup crews, and so forth, wouldn't you be interested in knowing more about such a tool? Finding workers and creating a perfect schedule can take an enormous amount of time, and one small cancellation can throw everything off sync. Well, a friend in our ministry built a tool for use in his local church, a tool that makes scheduling super easy. You just set up your task, you enter the volunteers, and literally click one button to automatically build a fair schedule. It considers all scheduling conflicts, vacations, and even makes sure that volunteers are fairly spread so that no one is overused. It handles all the notifications as well. It is so user-friendly that volunteers can handle conflicts simply by logging on, locating a substitute, and swapping with another user. And the program handles the approval and updates everyone's schedule automatically. It's really quite amazing how you can go from a new blank schedule to a fully populated, fairly balanced schedule in one click. And I imagine this could save you or someone at your church a lot of time. Our friend built this program for his own church, but it was so well received that other churches began using it as well. It's now available to you. It's called The Church Crew. Pay them a visit at thechurchcrew.com. It's completely free to try it out and see how powerful it is and how it could help your church family. Again, that's thechurchcrew.com. And when you visit them, thank them for supporting us here at the Keeping It Young podcast. Welcome to Keeping It Young Podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Bethley. And we are the Youngs. We're glad you're here. Hey, thanks for joining us again today. And we are ready to start a brand new series Mm. in uh, something we have been looking forward to. Many of you who have heard us teach and and speak know that one of the things Bethley and I do frequently is that we will read books about marriage, about raising children, yes. even about the bedroom. Yes. And uh, I don't know that we meet this goal every year, but we try to read at least once a year uh, books in that genre. Right. One is because we just figure there's people out there that have mastered and studied and researched and can help us with areas and right. remind us of important areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, in raising children, we just feel like we need all the help we can get. So right. we read a multiple, you know, just multiple authors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then even in the bedroom, just a reminder of why that's important. Mm-hmm. And also we learn, you know, not only how to apply things to our lives, but we also learn how to help others with the questions and the things that they're facing. Right. Sometimes books address things that we have not faced in our marriage, but that is good research for us or for us just to have on Absolutely. hand in counseling situations. Sure. And so we periodically will go over a book on our podcast. And so we have found a book and... It's, uh, it's an older book. It was written 22 years ago, 23 years ago now. So mm-hmm. it's copyrighted in 2000. Right. And uh, one of the things that was funny about this book, because it doesn't seem that old. I mean, 2000 really is not that long ago. Right. But I was looking through the notes today after I read the book and made notes in it. Then Bethley read my copy and made notes in it. And uh, one of the things that Bethley had put a little uh, humor, I don't know, a smiley face or something beside is they use the word tapes. Oh, because right. do you remember that? He said yes. something about one of the things you can do is put a tape in the you know in the car and and of, of praise music, a tape of praise music. And so <laughs> Bethley had commented on that in the margin, and it's just amazing because I was thinking, you know, that's that's interesting because that was only in two thousand, and he referred to tapes, right? And and yet almost nobody in the new generation would even know what a tape looks like and no. what to do with one if you they had it. You just need to have your phone in the car, and all of a sudden it will play your playlist. And now there's you know not even <laughs> CDs much anymore, right? And certainly no records or eight tracks for you that are older. We'll throw that in there for you. And, uh, <laughs> what are those, honey? But uh, there's a lot of records still out there, though. <laughs> That's and true. They are children, collector's editions. Our children crack me up because they're like, I'd like to get a record player. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, seriously? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all, that's awesome. But the book we're going to discuss is entitled The Five Love Needs of Men and Women by Dr. Gary and Barbara Rosberg. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a unique book in the sense that it covers five chapters just to men and five chapters just for women. But in each chapter, they address men first, right? Right. Or no, he addresses subject right in each subject. They address women first. He addresses the women, so so Dr. Rosberg writes to the men. Yeah, Dr. Gary 
talks to the ladies about the men's needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, his wife, Barbara, talks to the men about the wife's needs. Right. And so it's just a really unique, uh, kind of a unique way of writing. True. And um, uh, I would just, as we read it, Beth and I had a lot of uh, comments, a lot of things to talk through, just Mm -hmm. questions and some things we found humorous. What would you say would be the strength of the book? I think probably there's a lot of practical application. They give a lot of illustrations. And so you can read through the illustration and even see how some of the practical steps that they give to meet a certain love need. I'm putting quotes around that. The steps that they say you should take that will help in your marriage, then they'll give an illustration. And so you can see it kind of fleshed out there on the page. So I would say probably a lot of practical application. Yeah, and I would add to that, there is some hope in the book as well. True. Because they lay out a lot of illustrations where there was a dis- difficulty or a challenging situation and steps that couples took to help them overcome that and get back on the right track. Right. So you will find a lot of hope in the book. Uh, what would you say are the weaknesses of the book? I would say, first of all, and I had not even thought of this until I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about how that some marriage books will actually, they put either in their title or it is throughout the book that they this is an actual need in the marriage. Now, I know what the author means by that. They they do mean that there are some essentials that you should have in your marriage, but that some couples can kind of go to seed on that and they can read a certain book and say, well, this is a need that I have and you are not meeting my need. And so it kind of gives them a little bit of an entitled attitude mm. in the marriage. So I don't think that's what the Rosbergs mean at all by titling the book, The Five Love Needs needs. I don't think it's so that the husband or wife can say, oh, you're not meeting my needs. And so we have a problem. Yeah. So it's not about being demanding. It's about understanding your spouse so you can meet their needs. Right. But I could see how some people may take it that way. Another weakness that uh, is just my opinion. Um, But when Mrs. Rosberg addresses the men, she does seem to come across a little... I don't know if the word would be harsh, but just in a way that I would feel uncomfortable addressing men. She's just, it's very much, this is just how it has to be. You just, if you do anything different than what I'm laying out for you, then you probably are not meeting your wife's needs. So in your opinion, she's maybe a little more authoritative than you're comfortable with. Right, towards the men. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I could see that. And and here's here's how the book came to be. Uh, Dr. Gary and Barbara Roseberg, they list themselves as America's family coaches. And I remember reading that and thinking that may be a little over the top until I realized that it's actually the name of their ministry. Mm-hmm. So it is the title of their ministry. And uh, the book comes highly recommended by, you know, even Dr. Tony Evans and people of that sort. So it, it's a, a highly recommended book. It's written in 2000. And it basically is, is subtitled America's Family Coaches Share New Research That May Surprise You and Change the Way You Experience Your Marriage. And so basically what they did is over a course of time, the Rosbergs, and I guess in their their conference or Rosbergs, I think is how you say their name, in their conferences or their seminars, their particular ministry, they evaluated couples. They listed what they believed to be like 40 main needs that we have. Mm-hmm. And then they had all of these couples anonymously fill out husbands and wives. What would you list as your top five needs? Right. And you had to rate them out of all of these 40, which you say is number one. This is this is the number one need. Mm-hmm. This is the number two need. And so from that particular research is where they developed this book, The Five Love Needs of Men and Women. Right. And so here here's what they came up with. What are the top five that men chose? I think it was over 700 men. Right. right? So here's, here's the top five out of 40 different options. These are the top five that men chose. So these are... Um, husband's needs. Um, Unconditional love is number one. Two, intimacy. Three, friendship. Four, encouragement. And five, spiritual connection. Okay. Now, let's just, because that's a lot, give give us those one more time for audience. All right, number one. Unconditional love. All right. Intimacy, friendship, encouragement, and spiritual connection. Okay, so here's what he's saying. Men said, these five areas are the top five needs that I I have in my marriage relationship. Right. Okay. So what would be, what what did the ladies say? The ladies said, here's my top five needs that I have. I I desire this from my husband. Right. So wives said, number one, unconditional love. Two, intimacy. 
Three, spiritual intimacy. Four, encouragement. Five, friendship. Well, that's interesting. It is interesting. And, and so this is what fascinated me about the book. And it fascinated me because, number one, both couples chose unconditional love, or both genders chose yes. unconditional love. The husband did, the wife did, and uh, or both spouses. That's the word I meant to say. Mm -hmm. Both spouses chose unconditional love as their number one need. If I had only one need that could be met by my spouse, this is the one. I want my spouse to love me unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Did you find that interesting? I don't think so. I think everyone would like to think that their spouse will love them no matter what. Yeah, I guess that does make sense, doesn't yes. it? Yes. And so here's what happens in the book. They begin by talking to the wives about their need, their their husband's need. Mm -hmm. So he said, he says, I need unconditional love. So right. uh, just, just a few things. Men, this is part of the book, men need to hear their wife's assurance that, that her love is unconditional mm -hmm. in the good times, but especially in the bad times. Right. And by bad times, it doesn't even necessarily mean, at first I thought when he said that, that he was going to talk that, you know, our marriage is rocky, our marriage is struggling, our marriage is falling apart. It's a bad time. Mm. But what most men apparently men in that is that when life is hard, mm -hmm. when when you know my my job is struggling and my finances are struggling and right. and the business is not doing as well as we wanted it to and the cars you know broke and our finances aren't as strong as they should be and mm -hmm. I just feel like I can't get ahead and can't keep my head above water. Those right. are the bad times men refer to. Did, did, did I read that right? Do you agree with yes. that? Yes. Yes. And so then what he said is, ladies, there are five ways. Five ways you can show your husband unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Did you agree with these? He says, number one, you need to show him grace in his weaknesses. I do. I do agree with that. You agree with that. Mm -hmm. So what, what, do you, what would you say to wives who are listening? What does it mean to show your husband grace in his weaknesses, in your own words? <laughs> well, first of all, I think wives see weaknesses where there are not weaknesses um, because it's just that he's different. Can I, can I quote that? Yes. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you may. I, I honestly, I, I think that's um, true across the board because girls are expecting their husband to respond to situations the way they would respond to mm. the situation. And so they see in their husband when he is responding to a situation differently. And let's just um, use the illustration of how they... <laughs> Uh, may take care of physical needs for your children versus how you would take care of it. Maybe oh. how mm. he would bathe the baby, diaper the baby, play with the baby is totally different than how you would um, bathe the baby, diaper the baby, play mm. with the baby, feed the baby. And so you see that as a weakness. He just doesn't know how to take care of a baby the way you do. And so um, girls are very quick to culturally, and I wouldn't say across the board in Christianity, um, some couples are very careful about this, but culturally, girls can be very quick to point out um, what they perceive to be their husband's weakness instead of showing grace and encouragement in what they perceive to be their husband's weakness. In fact, even um, I have seen on Instagram reels that make fun of what women consider to be men's weaknesses. And that in and of itself does not show unconditional love. That shows disdain. It shows criticism. It shows, um, well, it gives him a great deal of discouragement. Well, why should I even try to help with the baby if I can never live up to your standard, mm. um, so to speak? So showing grace in a weakness or what you consider to be a weakness would be a big one, I think would go a long ways to yeah. showing unconditional yeah, a, love. What a good reminder to maybe pause here and just say that what may be funny in an Instagram reel can be deadly to a marriage. Yes. And because it does not show unconditional love, it does not show you know genuine love and interest and tenderness and kindness. Mm -hmm. And so our culture needs a good, a good reminder about that. Right. In your marriage, do not allow an Instagram reel to influence you to, to fail in this area. So wives, here's what he says. Mm -hmm. uh, you show grace in his weakness. Uh, here, here's a couple of others. Um, he, he said the way you show unconditional love to your husband is you affirm him as often as possible. Right. And do you agree with that one? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how does that one apply? 
So that would just affirming him is the same as I would say from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, where it says the wife see that she reverence her husband, that is um, hold him in respect, hold him in awe. And um, the same in Ephesians chapter 4, where it says to um, that our communication should be with edification, we should build. Mm. So instead of saying, oh, are you serious? You, you didn't do it right. You should say, hey, that was great, and thank you so much for helping me out. Um, You know, even if he doesn't do the dishes the way you would do them or clean the house the way you would clean it or do with whatever with the kids, I would... I would strongly encourage you ladies to affirm, affirm, Mm. affirm. And um, if there's something negative that absolutely has to be said, then that takes a special kind of conversation and communication. It should not be something that is totally flying out of your mouth all of the time. Right. And and one thing I was sitting here thinking is that sometimes uh, in the culture, you know, just in the world we live in, in a dating relationship, you'll see couples who defend the weaknesses and failures of the one they're dating. Mm-hmm. And even to the point of getting upset at parents who dare point out the weakness or the failure. True. And for some reason, after we get married, so many times a couple then feels free to criticize, to mm. tear down, to destroy. Right. So what he's saying here is really good. Show grace in his weaknesses. Affirm him as often as possible. This is about his need for unconditional love. There's three others he mentions. Help him feel safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, take time to connect with him and study him. Right. Mm-hmm. And any any practical advice you'd give from those three points? I would say all three of those would probably have to do with um, communication, mm-hmm. finding um, your husband, helping him to feel safe to communicate. If as soon as your husband opens his mouth to say anything, it, you cut him off and tell him he's saying it wrong or tell him, oh, well, this is what you need to do about it or... Um, I don't have time to listen to you right now. He's not going to feel safe. And of course, taking time to connect has a lot to do with um, communication. And then studying him, um, I think, is just um, how to connect with him, how to make him know that you love him unconditionally. It would be safe to say a couple of things here. One is that every, every man is different. Mm-hmm. So that if your husband, you know, maybe he's not what we would call typical in some area. Mm-hmm. Well, you need to study him because he is still, you know, the man for you, your husband. Right. And and you have to learn what makes him feel affirmed, what makes him feel unconditional love. Right. And the taking the time to connect, I think, was written as well in connection to the idea of having children. Because life gets busy, life gets demanding, and sometimes, especially if you're a lady who works a full-time job, you have children, there's laundry, there's cooking, there's a house to clean, there's so many demands on our time, Mm -hmm. that often some men will feel like, okay, my wife loves the children, but could, you know, take me or leave me. Mm. And I think one of the things he's making there is that men need to feel this unconditional love that, no, you're number one in my life, right. and that I care about you, I love you, and nothing will ever change that. Yes. That has to be shown, illustrated, communicated continually. Yes. And so this was the first one. Both both chose unconditional love, and that's what he said to the wives. Right. And then in the second part, she talks about how that women uh, need to know they are accepted by their husbands. Right. This is unconditional love. Unconditionally loved. loved. And, yes. and, and this is what she said. She said that women need this most... At their greatest point of pain, uh, that may be something that happened in their background Mm -hmm. or something they're going through right now, they need at their greatest point of vulnerability. Mm. And uh, here's a a quote. Let me see if I can find it here. And um, let me see. Page 43. Uh, She said, we... um, and this was under the point of, here's several several comments. She said, we need to connect with and relate to people as we fulfill our goals in life. We are stimulated by tasks that involve people. And she's just talking about how life is. She said, we work hardest to please the people we are accountable for, uh, our husbands, our children, our parents, our dear friends. Yet we can't please everybody all the time without self-destructing. She's saying that men need to understand that Mm -hmm. because the wife's trying to please, but then she she feels like she's self-destructing when she's trying to please everybody. And she says, many women work so hard at trying to make a good impression on everyone, they end up pleasing nobody, Mm -hmm. including themselves. So all she's trying to say there is that this is where she needs unconditional love and acceptance. She needs it at a point where she's struggling with pain, uh, whether that's emotional, uh, you know, 
what what that the, the pain the point of, mm-hmm. of I hurt there's a hurt there right and then she needs it at a place where there's a, a vulnerability where she's overextending herself or she feels like she's failing mm-hmm. and that the third one was she needs it at her greatest point of failure mm-hmm. and as we were reading through this book um, I think those made sense to me did they make sense to you they do yes and I would say especially um, a lady who has something in her past that. Um, for lack of a better word, haunts her, um, something that just keeps coming back up in her heart, something that's very difficult for her to get over, um, for her husband to unconditionally love her at that point of pain instead of being like, oh my goodness, is that still bothering you? You just need to let that go. Um, I think probably getting, um, I don't want to use the word over it, but maybe getting through it and past it um, would be easier having a husband who loves you unconditionally through it. Sure, that makes sense. So here's what she said then. How can we as husbands love our wives unconditionally? And uh, he gave five answers to that question to the, to the, uh, to the wives. She gives men eight uh, answers to us. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, okay, okay, That's okay. because we're a little complicated. A little more complicated. And, and here's just, uh, maybe not all of them, but here, here's, here's the general idea. He said that we have to encourage our spouse. Mm. She said this, husband, you encourage her. Yes. And, um, and one of the marginal notes, Bethley wrote, what about everyday fails? Mm. And what do you mean by everyday fails? Being encouraged in everyday fails shows unconditional love. Well, I think, um, I, I'm trying to remember the book. It's been a couple of months since I read it. But I think when she was talking about encouraging her, um, she was talking about, you know, big things that might discourage her. But I know as as a wife and a mama, um, a lot of my discouragement just comes from my everyday, you know, oh goodness, I didn't get this done or I didn't do that right. Or um, there was just way too much to do this day and I just couldn't get to it, all of it. And I wanted to. And um, I know as a young mama, many, many nights I would go to bed thinking, I just didn't get anything done today that should have been done, or at least I didn't do it well. And I remember um, us having a conversation about that, but I, It was always so helpful to me when I felt like, you know, you would recognize that I might have been struggling just in that daily overload and you to give me an encouraging word or to remind me that you love me, that everything was good, um, just different things like that. So that's what I meant by that. I see. And husbands, the thing I think I learned there was that encouragement, first of all, our wife needs that to feel unconditionally loved. Mm-hmm. And secondly, oh, the other thing I'm learning from this book is that just because uh, just because I think it doesn't mean she knows it. Right. So the encouragement has to be said. So right. it matters a great deal when I let my wife know that I think she's doing a great job with, and I name it. Right. Where it's cooking, cleaning the house, taking care of the children, homeschooling the kids, educating. Uh, all of those things have to be said. And sometimes we as men, we think it. And we're just as pleased as I'll get out. And men have this thing. I think sometimes the way God designed ladies is that when they're thinking something, they almost have to say it, whether it's positive or negative. They just have to get it out. <laughs> right. And, and men will often feel like we need to say it because it's a problem, so we got to talk about it. But when it's a good thing, sometimes we withhold that because all is well. And when all is well, we feel like, well, everything's good, so I don't need to say that. Right. But the point she's making here to us as husbands is our wives have to have encouragement if they're mm-hmm. going to feel loved unconditionally. Right. And she also wrote that we need to stand with our wife. Mm-hmm. And she's talking about all the different situations in life. You stand with her. If you know she's struggling on her job, you stand with her. If she's mm-hmm. struggling with a situation in life, you stand with her. In right. the notes on this one, Bethley put beside it, uh, as in mis- miscarriage and menopause. Mm-hmm. And those were two times where we went through the miscarriage several times in our, in our relationship. Mm-hmm. And standing with her during that, letting her know that, you know what, I don't know that I know all the answers, but I'm here. I'm going right. to be here for you. You're going to get through this. Mm-hmm. I'm on your side. I love you. Nothing will ever change that. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting how many of these apply to saying and showing. Right. Unconditional love has to be said and shown in all mm-hmm. these different ways. Right. Any, anything you would add to that one? I would just say, um, just reiterate what you said about actually opening your mouth and saying something. Because in your heart, husbands, you might be thinking, well, of course I stand with her. Of course I think she's amazing. Um, but if if she hasn't heard it from you, she may not know it. She may not um, 
for lack of a better term, feel it. <laughs> yeah, that's the word I was thinking because, you know, probably she knows, uh, you know, if she's logical. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a funny thing to say, if she's logical. If she's logical. Well, if she's logical. Women but if she's can thinking, be logical. If she's thinking logically, down in her heart, she will say, I know he loves me. I know yes. he cares. I know he's for me. Yes. But a happy marriage is when she feels it. When she feels because you've shown it, because you've said it. You're yes. encouraging her. You're standing with her. Mm-hmm. The third thing she said is you have to compliment her just because mm. with no strings attached. Right. Just Just compliment. And uh, that is huge. I, I do know that. And having a wife and two daughters, I know that that is huge. It is. It matters a great deal if I notice our daughter's dress. Yes. And and more so if I say something. Yes. And if I do the same to my wife. And men, we have to mm-hmm. work at that in our culture. You compliment right. her. And I will say that, you know, if, if I say to David, if I've gone through a whole day and maybe my hairdo is different or I have on a new outfit or something and he hasn't noticed, I will say, well, what do you think about? Out. because in my heart I'm thinking he's not saying anything because he doesn't really like it <laughs> and sometimes he's not saying anything because he really didn't notice right <laughs> and, and both of those can be a failure yeah and then it could but then you know um David will say something like well I always think you look good you know instead of and so I'm just kind of like, well, that's not really a compliment either so I don't really yeah. know so don't just say well I always think you look good say, that dress is beautiful, or I really like your Absolutely. hair today, or you did a great job with the meal tonight. Yes, and wives, you can even help your husband with new clothes or a new hairdo. You can come in and say, what do you think about my new hairdo? What do you think <laughs> about my new dress? Yes. And uh, and sometimes a, a husband, because he's not, he doesn't think like a lady who notices, I'm amazed at the things my wife will notice. Mm-hmm. And Beth will be like, did you see what so-and-so was wearing? Or did you like that outfit? I'm like, hey. Well, I'm sure I would have had an opinion maybe, but I couldn't tell you what they were wearing if I had to. Right. But God designed my wife with that ability to know what they were wearing, to see it, to have an opinion about it, Mm -hmm. and wants to know mine. So men, we have to work at this, and and it's a continual thing. We're about out of time, but here's here's a couple of others. Uh, We the, the the book says encourage your wife that shows her unconditional love. Stand with her, compliment her. Uh, and here, here's the last five. Respect her opinion, talk with her and listen, be tender, spend time with her, serve her. Mm-hmm. Two of those sent out to me, and maybe we'll have to start our next session with these. But um, the, the respect her opinion is a big one because I do respect Bethley's opinion, but sometimes she doesn't feel like I do. And I've had to work through in my own heart and thinking, how can I show Bethley that I respect her opinion. And one of those things is I have to hear her out and ask questions Mm -hmm. because my tendency is often to jump in and give the answer, right? at least what I think the answer is. And then my wife will say something like, well, you didn't hear, you you didn't listen to me. And then it shuts down. She shuts down. She withdraws. Mm -hmm. And, And learning how to respect her opinion is huge, but also learning how to be tender. And this is a quote right out of the book, and I'm just going to give it because I thought it was so good. Um, husbands, don't take her moodiness personally. <laughs> if she's having a rough day, don't take it personally. If she's going through her monthly cycle, don't take her her emotional uh, you know, angst or her emotional struggle during that time. Don't take it personally. Right. So this is the first two. Uh, he says women need unconditional love and men need unconditional love and all 700 couples Put that one at the top of the list. Yes. So uh, we can stop there. Any further comment or thought? And then we'll come back next week and keep this conversation going. Well, I think, you know, as you study your husband and wife, um, you do see the things that they need the most. Uh, We might not have named something today that you know that your husband needs um, or that your wife needs or that they appreciate in your marriage. So as you study them, you know how to love them best. You know how to give them unconditional love. Just to, but sometimes as we get busy in life, we just let some of those things slide. So Absolutely. these are just reminders to help us to always show unconditional love in our marriages. Absolutely. So we've been talking about the book, The Five Love Needs for Men and Women. And we hope you'll join us next time and we'll look at a couple of the other needs. All right. So this is Keeping It Young Podcast. And we hope this week ahead that you will serve the Lord with gladness. The Keeping It Young Podcast is a Bax 5 Media Production.